C-reactive protein, which is also, by the way, prognostic for many things. So if you have an elevated CRP at the time of your breast cancer diagnosis or colorectal cancer diagnosis, you have a poor prognosis. That kind of comes back to the cardiolipid thing you just talked about because CRP initially was a marker for cardiac health. And cardiac inflammation, right? And it it still says it on the on the LabCorp results. Exactly, and so it's it's checking that inflammatory process at that at that layer we were talking about a while ago. The other one is sed rate, sedimentation rate, ESR. Now this one, you know, you'll often see that elevated. It's how fast your blood fall, your blood cells fall out of plasma, out of solution. So if it falls out really fast, that's great. It's like, good, it's nice and smooth in there, right? It's like, it should be under 10. It should fall out quickly. But if it takes a while and they kind of just hang out in the goo, well, that should probably tell you right then and there. It's probably kind of thick and gelatinous and not good. You want flow. You want it to be nice and lubricated and smooth. The higher that number, the more inflammation in the in the tissues as well. And- and then the third one, the LDH, lactase dehydrogenase, that is the most important test for your metabolic health there is. Mm. Lactase dehydrogenase, as the name implies, is part of the good old Krebs cycle. And it literally, as my husband says, if the LDH is high, your mitochondria are off. And this is the thing. Remember, labs are based on the average of the population. So you don't right. want to be average. So in the functional optimal range, you want, depending on lab core, you want it under 175 or Quest Diagnostics, you want it under 450. If you end up having high CRP above one or 0.1, depending on the lab, and a sed rate above 10, and you end up coming back with an actually a weirdly low LDH, like under 160, get your LDH isoenzymes. Because sometimes some of us have some particular uh, genetics that give us kind of erroneous or false LDHs. Mm. So I look at them as a collective. Individually, you could Google any of them or PubMed any of them and see that even by themselves are quite prognostic in the cancer world. But very specifically, when we're looking at them as a collective, they literally tell us the health and wealth of our mitochondrial function, our metabolic function, our inflammatory function, our immune function, our terrain function in general. So for me, the trifecta has been far more sensitive and specific than any cancer marker and than any scan.